King to Speak listeners, welcome back. We have a familiar face and voice on the podcast today. Let's talk culture on Kingdom Speak with Pastor Daniel McKillop. He's very familiar. He's wearing a tie and a sweater. It's me. It's the familiar faces around. Oh, it's him. Yeah, it's him. Oh, it's him. It's him. Oh, okay. We don't have a camera. I I thought it was the other guy. (laughs) Welcome into our Christmas cave, everyone, on Kingdom Speak. It's that time of year. Hey. The most wonderful time of the year. I I think think the, um, the most commented on portion of the last mm-hmm. design <laughs> yeah. was the popcorn in the middle of the table. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that was mentioned repeatedly. Allie's to blame for that. Yeah. This one's a little that was right up there with our uh, intro music, the popcorn. The bumper music. Yes. Bumper music. Get it right. With yeah. Bill. So yeah. Yeah, Bill the only, the only difference whip. is we changed out the popcorn. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> we knew it wasn't popcorn. <laughs> we tried it and it was not popcorn. There's this high range <laughs> bushes do not taste like popcorn. <laughs> There's this guy promoing a new website with us called BillsBumperMusic.com. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard anything about it? Bill's Bumper It's only music. got one track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill's we love Bill. Oh, he gets Bill. more advertisement oh. than anybody. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. So we need to get to a couple of reviews, and our guest is chomping at the bits here. So he's just, ooh, ready to go. So quickly, um, we have two quick reviews for you. The first one is a five-star Apple podcast review, and it says, keep it coming. I love the content you guys are putting out. Lots of hard work put into the visuals from David Morales on Apple Podcasts. Thank you, David. Uh, yeah. So we will say amen. 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 That guy knows what goes in. Yep. Thanks. He's, he, he helps. Yeah. Biblos, I believe. Who if I'm will, wrong on that, I'm sorry. But, who will yeah. be... And a guest on an upcoming oh, podcast, yes. by the way. Oh, yes. It's been requested, ready. and we have him the on the hook. Get ready. Another five-star Apple podcast review says, closest thing to Bible college. This podcast Come on now. is the closest thing to Bible college that I can find. Very deep, yet easy to understand. I listen to this podcast every day. I don't know where I would be without you guys. Keep it coming. Oh, man. And that's from Apostolic Biddle. So <laughs> there, we Apple Apple there we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. 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 Get a hallelujah. Hallelujah. But do do we need diplomas and and the such yeah. like? Yeah, you've been Doctor McKillop. Hey, that's what it is. That is what it is. That is what it is. That happened to me again this week. Yep. yep. Thanks. Hmm. So, sir, would you like to leave that on your credit card? Yes, that would be great. Thank you, Doctor McKillop. <laughs> No, pro- no problem. No problem. That's, that's fine. Be blessed. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what did we do to deserve this today? What did we uh, do? We, the reviews. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The reviews. We're in a bit of a slump, eh? We are. Mm-hmm. And oh. we, <laughs> we, we, needed. Just, we needed traction. We're oh. in that season where we needed to switch it up and need, get some. We're yeah. at a point. It's do or die. Yeah. Our yeah. Back, do or die. Our backs yeah. to the wall. Yeah. Our tongues have been talked to the bone. <laughs> <laughs> and we need an outside source of help. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so to the rescue, <laughs> woo! To the rescue. Let's hear it. Is our dear friend Pastor Wade Townley? Come on, somebody, give You're it up! Welcome. Give it up! Give it up! How are you, my friend? Well, I'm doing well, but. What an introduction. Wow. You guys must be scraping the bottom. Terrible, man. This is terrible. Scraping the bottom. We know where to go. Mm. When when, when the algorithms and the reporting comes in, we know where to go. Mm -hmm. And so I'm honored. Thank you for letting me be here at least, man, at least to help you give you a helping hand up. How about that? Yeah. I like that necktie. That's pretty fancy. Well, you know what? I would have to give the credit to my uh, fashion advisor. Oh, yeah. For the Daniel McKillop. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. And the one I noticed nice you wear deflection. the black eyes a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. And definitely Kingdom Speak mm-hmm. approved. Yeah, it kind of has that knowledge 
wisdom, something like that. I think. Oh, really? Really? So, so You're pulling I, the whole Robert on us, are you? So oh, come on, I, I got to like liking his ties there. When uh, when you're through with it, just kind of let it drop down, and I'll catch it, kind of like the mantle. From, yeah, yeah. From Elijah I, down. I actually set it right beside that other tie that I took from you. <laughs> <laughs> We have Black. entered, we have entered a tie exchange program yeah. before, yeah. Un, un, sometimes unwittingly or unknowingly, but it's happened. Uh, necessity brings on quite. Uh, and quite you never deep. get it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I leave mine accidental. I take his intentional, so it's mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. It's part of a culture that we've got with our friendship. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I do notice that he kind of has these black ties. So I thought he'd have, a, he probably has a black tie under that gray sweat. Oh, <laughs> he does. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. He nailed it. Looking at all you guys. So I've been watching you guys on your podcast. And by mm-hmm. the way, it's just been tremendous. And I noticed y'all like the black ties. So I thought I'd try to fit in there a little bit. Well, fit in with the culture. You, you played it well. Yeah, you played it well. My backdrop's not as quite as good as you guys is, but uh, I've been trying to clean out a downstairs basement and just give you a concrete wall. Listen, so. listen. <laughs> at least oh. your books are better. Uh, we, we yeah, we're pretty slim pickings. On yeah, the we are. Right we're now. pretty slim pickings on the book. If I could, we just got the shelves. A new cup, a new cup, a new. Uh, a new okay, mug? we can, we can do that. Did you lose it? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I, I uh, if you're going to be heart. part of the kingdom speak culture, you need a cup. Yeah, it, it, it's I, the I mug like club. Who, who, who is it that says that? <laughs> Stephen Crowder, Stephen Crowder, Crowder yep. the mug club. You got to be a part of the mug club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have two, but I have, I have three daughters here. Ah, so uh, uh, that's a problem. What color do you want? I like the orange and blue. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. You hadn't guessed the orange, you know. Kind we're, of we're with you. Color. Blue jacket. And the blue I jacket. It. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, man, yeah. we are really glad to have you back. Um, it's, we, we could do conversation like this for mm-hmm. an hour, and it'd be fun, but we might we might lose somebody at some point. But I know you've got something that'll keep their attention, and we're going to tackle really a topic that's much larger than the mm. than the perimeters of one podcast. So, if if we need to take more than one, we'll do it. Um, your your episodes on evangelism remain mm-hmm. um, some of our most viewed or listened to podcasts. It's probably a a great portion of our audience, unless you have been back in our archives. Maybe you haven't even. Listen, True enough. Radical True enough. evangelism, if you go way back. Yeah. Um, it was like April. A was, year ago. 2020. Yeah, 2020. 2020. 16, 16, 17 years ago now. Yeah. Something 16, like 17 years ago. Yeah. So much was different back then. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to tackle the topic of culture. Um, and man, there's, there's, all, there's so many layers to this. But um, I want to I want to bunt it over to you and let you set it up. Um, but but being apostolic really has a culture component to it, doesn't it? You know, it, it really does. We have our own language, and you know, looking at culture, uh, it's defined. And if you don't mind, I'll I'll read this just for yeah. What, what, yeah, what, what I guess that was kind of a lead-in question. What defines yeah. a culture? It's the characteristic and knowledge of a particular group of people encompassing language, beliefs, uh, food, social habits, music, arts, economy, and customs. Mm. So mm. the reality of it is apostolics and Pentecostals do have their own culture as such. Uh, and there's cultures, of course, within the cultures. But I find that our language is one of the largest uh, differences in in, when an individual comes into our our apostolic culture. You know, the term praying through, I know these are basic scenarios, but uh, praying through is one, or coming in and uh, 
man, they got the Holy Ghost. A lot of people don't, are not even familiar with the term. They got the Holy Ghost. Or, you you know, know, I had to write a letter um, this weekend on the behalf of someone that was going to a, a an employer. And I had included in there that being led by the Spirit, because it was, it was around a religious, uh, it was a religious exemption deal. And I, I looked at that and went, are they even going to know? what being led by the Spirit is. So I had to refine the language so that it could be interpreted properly. So you're, you're so right. Language is that central uh, communication of a culture. Yes. One of the, uh, my, uh, Tavia is writing, um, you know, she just graduated, but she wrote on a cultural paper. I had her uh, give it to me today. But in her writing, she was talking about when you, uh, cross cultures. She's taking classes on uh, uh, international business. And there are two different uh, things that you must focus on. One is what are the basic norms of that particular target culture that you're targeting? You need to understand what those basic norms are. And then being sure that you mirror those uh, once you think you've picked up on what one of those cultural traits are, then mirror it back, make sure they give you proper feedback on that. Of course, I think uh, you may have the book, but uh, the uh, Chinese, uh, it was a book about China, the largest consumer middle class. And it really dives into some of the details there, how that their culture is a little different. I won't go into all the difference of their culture, but as we're more, uh, you make an agreement, you stand by that agreement. China tends to be a, a bit different there. They may tell you one thing, but it's really based on your relationship versus what they say. So uh, the two of those things, one, is understanding uh, that what's your target in that culture. And the number two is to uh, be able to identify what that culture is and then mirror it back. Now, that's when you want to blend in with the culture. Right. So and you're so interpreting you this, this is the language or the behavior of a culture, and I want to fit in, so I'm going to adopt. And so that's more of like a, a witnessing or, you know, you've got missionaries going in and they want to identify with that particular culture. So they're going to learn the language. They're going to learn the dress. They're going to learn all of these things and mirror it back. But, you know, I guess what is churning in deep in my spirit inside of that culture is that what do we do to actually get into that culture to change cultures that, you know, uh, apostolic culture, and we want to make it better, stronger. And, uh, you know, we've got people coming in from the outside, and they're going to be learning our culture. And we've got to be aware of that. So that that's something that has caught my attention through the years. One of the most basic approaches is, is what's the difference between the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost, you know, and, mm, right. and that, that's basic. But I'm telling you, if you're witnessing to somebody and you're constantly out in a harvest field that's never been around Pentecost. That's one of the key language differences. Right. Sure it is. And, and so we're, you know, we are living in, uh, in that culture. Now that's more of a micro look at, you know, at our apostolic culture. But when you see cultures as a whole, that's affected by language and you see them affected by, uh, their their arts, their music, and things. We see that as a social, the overall social norm around the world. We see what culture is taking place. Now, individually, we see it more microscopically. We can see that things are different. But as a whole, we're seeing uh, the world trending more toward anarchy. You're seeing it with organ rioting, and you're seeing it through with, of course, all the COVID mandates and the uprising and all that's going on. We're seeing a lot of upheaval. And a lot of that is related to the culture at the core group of where that is. But it's a lot of anarchy where we've taught them culturally in America, forgive me here, but we've taught them to disrespect authority. We've taught them to dishonor the father. We've taught them to remove father as a whole. 
And we've totally upset the structure of the biblical structure and culturally. Judeo-Christian culture. That value that is biblically based. We have totally upset the apple cart, and we are reaping as a nation, uh, literally cities on fire because of an upheaval. And culturally, we're trending toward uh, some, some, it's going to be even more chaotic than what we've already seen. And so the church has got to be able to cross, you, you know, kind of a buzz term here, but we've got to be able to cross culture. We've got to be able to cross those boundaries and to be able to reach them and be able to understand where they're coming from. You know, I, I never dreamed that we would literally have to preach in the pulpit, male and female. Sure. That scientifically, you only have a male and a female. Right. Biologically, but that is the way it is. It, it's Our forefathers would, would be humored by the fact that we have to, to, to defend that, that position. So when you see, the, you, you see the anarchy of the culture as a whole, that has a trickle-down effect. And it affects our language, and it affects our music. So we see it at, at, at a world culture, and then we, we see it at a state culture or providential cultural level. We see that it does trickle down to us inside and of our local church. Right. church. Right. The church as a whole, corporate. And if we're not careful, we can see that world trending into our world as a corporate, as a church as a whole. And when you see... Our churches, and this is what, oh God, you know, how do we protect our culture from the world's culture? Wow. Hmm. Wow. How do we, you know, we, we've got to go countercultural, so to speak. We, we, sure we do. The, the, uh, the idea that we can live in the world, it's an age old, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. But the reality of it is our children are going to college, our our Teachers are going to college. Our our men, our women, they're they're getting higher education. Uh, man, uh, if you'll just let me be real here, I was looking through one and uh, radical change, the quiet way. Is there any way then to rock the boat without falling out of it? And it and it's it's good cliches and it sounds good. But this entire premise I wrote through it and marked up is how to integrate homosexuality as an acceptable part of a work community. And, you know, it's got several other examples, but the reality of it is they are plotting to make culture that is unacceptable, acceptable in the world so that it will become acceptable in the church. What, what do you think the end game is? Well, it... Because <laughs> it really starts yeah. out with um, toleration, I guess. Toleration. But that, that doesn't appear to be the end game because once you tolerate it, it it's like they up the ante. So what, what, what's the end game? First of all, it demands that you tolerate it, accept it, and then last, it demands that you proclaim it. You can't just accept it, mm. and then you've got to protect it. Wow. And in in those scenarios, they're wanting to affect. It, it's always been hell's hell's plan to affect the culture of worship, to affect the culture of language. I mean, he changed. That's what he you know he attacks it in the garden. It's the language entity. And that is where it all goes back down to right. is the identity of the individual right. that you're nothing. You have no value. But the only value you have is what you have as a whole. If you can adapt and become a part of the culture, losing the individuality has no value. They can discredit the individual. Then they can discredit the act. And if they can discredit the act, they can discredit the product of the act child if they can discredit the individual the act the product of it then it doesn't matter 
uh, who, where, what it is. And it can even, and then it all blends down into, and we see this in Leviticus where he talks about so debased that it became a part, bestiality became a part of it at all. So when you see it as a total demise of the value of the individual. Which that individual, and this is part of our culture, is created in the image of God. It's to destroy that beautiful image. Yeah. It really is at that base level an attack against the image of God. And, and so what causes, you know, this then comes the question, what causes uh, the church to begin to accept cultural intr- intrusion what causes a church at a corporate level or at an individual level to begin to accept the influence of the world? What is it that would make a church that has can have Holy Ghost anointed music suddenly begin to entertain thoughts of men? This isn't good enough. Holy Ghost move isn't good enough. We, we got to change this. We got to change that. Right. Uh, it, it, and so what what causes that is a famine somewhere there's a famine of the of the anointing and there's a famine of the of the holy ghost and and there's there's no longer a move so mm. we got to supplement that with sound and light and, it, and then we yep. we change the whole culture of we just have to be careful that the world's culture and, and I'm not, and I'm not talking about that the means are, are the uh, how we manage it, but but we cannot change the message inside of that. I know that we're constantly changing. I don't have. I'm not against progressive oh, sure. change, sure. but to accept their language and their music and their style, we're going to be changed by that if we're not careful. And that's all. It- and we're we're. We are never, and I think the church has got to get this, we are never as good at what they are doing when we try to emulate it. We're, 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 not, we're not performers. We, we don't have, it is the anointing that puts the church in a league by itself. And the moment that we put that on the auction block we we drop down to a to a level of competition that we can't we can't compete at. You're saying I can't sing like Fred Hammond? Is that what you're saying right now? Uh, amongst a few other things. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. That wow. slid in easy, didn't it? That was borderline <laughs> offensive. So, wow. Well, yeah, I, I don't know that you'd want to wear the. You're exactly right, though. Yeah, As a church yeah. musician, there are bands that are much better than we are. Yeah, and 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 we want <laughs> to be as good as we can be, not yeah. to just to to bore down on this too much. We mm. we need to be as good skillfully, mm-hmm. but if we're not careful, the pursuit of that could lead us to adopting another identity. Am I understand? Is is that what you're getting at? Yeah, check this out. When they could not cause uh, the three Hebrew boys to bend to their bow, so to speak, and worship. They yes. said, we'll do this over. We'll play you some music and see if this won't affect you and help right. you. Right. You're, you're in a different world. You're in a different culture. Come on, it's acceptable. Right. And what we've got to do is have enough courage to not bend at, at a moment that is so vital. We're in Babylon. We're, we're in a different world. We're in a different realm at times. But just because I'm not always at Jerusalem doesn't mean that I have to bend to your, to your influence. Let, let me ask you this. Do you feel like we are in a society, and, and, and I'm not trying to adopt a victim mentality <laughs> here, but are we in a society where the infiltration or the, as you, to, to use the term, the cross-cultural um, implications. Do, do you think it's easier in this generation? I mean, we, we, through through social networking, um, the it, it would appear like the lane that the church is running in and the lane that society is running in, the, the integration of both of those 
are are pretty easy right now. It, it's, do, do you so, feel so like you can, it's? I think it, it's a it's a double edged sword. We have the ability to to blend in with them in the sense of reaching them, but it also has the ability for. Uh, they have the ability to influence us. We right. can we can make an impact socially, like you're talking about, just make a stand, make statements. But then we see young people that are following backsliders and individuals that have left and are now trending toward the world and crossing into the other culture. So it kind of has the ability to be a double-edged sword. And you know. Bishop Holmes has a way of saying that God did it that way. God made it that way to be able to purify the church so we can rail against it all we want. But at the end of the day, I believe God is setting us up for this moment in time that the true church will be stronger than it's ever been. And we have the ability to influence the world. Where does that fight happen? You you, you mentioned that speech is one of the primary defining attributes of a culture. So does this come back to preaching? Is that where is that what you're coming to? You've got you've got preaching and you've got again your languages, you've got your customs, you've got your everything. So so check this out. Let's say that we want to go in and change a culture. So that where's this battle at? So first of all, we'd go in, we'd change, uh, we'd change the way the dress is because we want to influence that. You know, we we that's where we'd start. We'd start with the way we dress. We'd start with the way we talk. Uh, we'd we'd start with with the way we sp- our speech. And so these are the Press things that we. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the key: if that's what we would do, and that's what we'd have to do to change a culture. That's what he's going to do to change our culture. He's right. going to affect our dress. He's going to affect our speech. He's going to affect our arts. He's going to affect our music. If if this is what changes it, just look around, and you'll see that's the. If we're going to make a difference, that's what we have to change. You, and I, I think about a Samaria in the famine, and in that process of famine, you see where. Uh, Dove's dung, five pieces of silver. Donkey's heads, 40 uh, pieces or four four score pieces of silver, 80 pieces of silver for a donkey's head. Mm. The cry goes out, what about our children? And here they are, you know, with their uh, finger bones, sticking their teeth, saying, we ate mine today. We need to eat yours tomorrow. You talking about a culture of famine going on. Wow. And all of a sudden, the man of God steps forward and said, and the king said, I'm going to take his head off. Look at the dress of famine. He's got ash, sackcloth, ashes under it, and he's, he rips his garment. And so there's an entire culture that goes with famine and uh, poverty and that culture. And so uh, the prophet, the man of God steps forward. He says, tomorrow, this time, you're going to have more than enough. And the man on whom the king leaned decided he was going to put some words to it. And he had such a mindset of famine and poverty that he says, "Wow! if God were to open the windows of heaven, this thing can't be. Wow. And if we're going to impact our, our church at a local, if we're going to impact the church at a corporate level, we got to start at the local level. So we got to start with those around us. And the reality is, and this kind of got me today is if we're going to change a culture, we got to change a man. Oh. You will, you mm. will not change a culture. Absolutely. Without you, you can change his dress, but no, no you got to change his heart. You know, this is more than just changing the way a man talks. It's more than just changing the way a man speaks. At the end of the day, that's what makes Christianity so powerful is because it changes the man at his core. It changes radically. Everything. Mm. radically mm. transforms so, that man. So so the mindset is we're fa- it's famine it's impossible it's too it and he this joker I won't call him joker this joker <laughs> decided that he was going to invoke something and he said if god were to open up the windows Should of heaven never my said man, that should he I want to tell you <laughs> there's only three there's only three times that term is used in the bible windows of heaven the first one 
is in the flood. Yep. You just invoked saying that if God were to try to fill the whole earth, he doesn't have the ability to do it. You better be right. careful. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, God, if God calls you to a culture, to the missionary, to the evangelist, to the pastor, I don't care how rural your church setting is. I don't care how drastic. It doesn't matter what their, their culture is. God has the ability to open the windows of heaven. And absolute, if he can change a man, he can change a culture. Wow. So that's good. So this, so this man says, if God were to open the windows of heaven and the prophet said, I'll tell you something, said, you'll see it, but you won't get to be able to partake of it. And I think that that's where we've got to look at ourselves and say, have we been a part of the famine so long that we have limited God's provisions in what he wants to do? God said, this is the vision. I, I, want, I want there to be a church here. I want there to be a, a, a prospering, thriving uh, group of people. And have we limited the provision of God? See, so you, you've you've just you've just pulled us from a very important part of the discussion as it relates to culture and how we maintain distinction between a church world and a decaying social world that's around us. But you've just you've just pulled us now into taking an apostolic culture and and tweaking that now we're 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 now we're now talking the people of God here and a culture of famine you you can be apostolic and still have a culture of famine is that is that what you're it's Yes, and, and these are perfect examples. And, and the thing is, is being being uh, willing, and I think that's uh, being willing to accept at times that we all find ourselves allowing outside culture to influence our thinking. Poverty, yes. uh, when, when God's entire economy, so to speak, is blessings and favor. Blessings, I will bless thee. Multiplying, I will multiply you. I'll take care of you. He calls you, he'll supply it. All, on and on that we've heard. But we've almost, in, in, in the culture of Pentecost can be uh, that somehow poverty is piety and poverty is spirituality and the more, the more uh, you know, uneducated you are. And I, I'm not against uh, education or the lack thereof. It's just a simple that uh, we can be influenced by these cultures, and we got to be careful. Uh, we got to be careful that we don't allow it to our detrimental. That, I guess that's what I would say. Well, yeah, because you you can have a. All right, we we know that Israel as a whole had a culture, but then we know that the individual tribes of Israel were identified by uniquenesses of dress. Uh, vision and and so really what you're talking about right now is when you get an apostolic an overall apostolic culture you can get that man adapted to speaking the right thing as it pertains to righteousness versus perverted talk or off color off color jokes and smut and so you, you clean that part of the man up He's born again. He's dressing. He's dressing in a modest way, but he still can be coming up short on some of the other aspects of, of that true cultural identity of what makes a man fully realize what God has created him to be. Uh, you, you have. You you really put it in context. So let's say we take that guy and we we see him change his language, we see him change his dress, we see him change, and he adapts to the apostolic culture, so to speak. And all of a sudden, we're seeing this individual be blessed as someone who's been here for thirty and forty years. What happened? You know, it's like, huh. and if and you you listen to it a lot of time, it's what he's saying versus what they're saying that they. 
they look at, they, they have the culture of Pentecost, but they don't have the language of God yet down. That's, right. that's some of the key components there. Mm-hmm. No, no better example of what you're saying than the, the rest of that Samaria story. Here were four, and we call them four lepers. Really, I've been convicted. The Bible says there were four leprous men. They're men. They're not lepers. Yeah, wow. Men. They're yeah. men. They're men. Now, they've wow. already gone through the process. They can't fellowship with the group. They're stuck outside. They're, in, they're stuck outside the wall. They're not perfect, and, and they're, not, they're not everything wow. that what's inside the wall, but what's inside the wall is eating their babies. What's inside the wall is eating dove's dung. What's inside is just living on a residue of uh, yesterday's move of the Holy Ghost, eating the leftovers of the dove. They're just eating, you know, what could have been revivals of the past. And you got four people out here that's, that's man, they've may have lost members they may have i mean their their sores are running and they they get to the mindset if i sit here i'm going to die and that's what has to happen for a culture to really change is we've got to say if i stay here i will die Mm. you know i was thinking about you uh pastor mckillop about 10 years ago i i you and I, I believe, we're in Quebec City, if I'm not mistaken. And i uh, never forget, we had spent the evening together, and we got up the next morning. I believe that was where we were. And you, the, the, the Lord had really talked to you in the night, and that's where he talked with you about Abraham, and he talked with you about the, a prayer warrior and ten righteous in a city. Right. Right. Remember, now here we are ten years later, and that was the culture that you began to in grain. And there we had already seen one church built in Grand Falls. And then you, you felt the need to start the church across in uh, Upper Maine there in uh, Presque Isle. And, and the mindset, that culture, you begin to present a culture into the church where the church as it is today is a completely different culture. You know, it, it, it was always about growth. It was always, but the church is not even the, it's mindset, it's passion. It's, and, and we've seen, if I can jump in with that, we have seen when a church adopts that on a, on, on a, on a cultural level, it, it, it becomes a part of who they are. The forward momentum of that culture carries you even farther than what you realize. This compounds. It compounds in the altar. How many did you have in the altar? Oh, we had two. No, no. Uh, we had six. No, no, we had eight because the idea is diversifying right. and growing. Right. And, and I wonder, this is what was getting me. I wonder if you had not had the courage to change the, uh, the culture, what would have happened in the last year, year and a half with COVID, had you not had the courage to change that culture mindset? Mm-hmm. And, and now look at what's happened over the last year and a half. People who could have starved to death were fed because there was a church that was provided for them. So uh, the four lepers decide they're going to get up and they go. And, and God took these four lepers to literally change the culture at that setting. Four lepers. Don't be surprised at who God selects to change the culture of oh, famine. Yeah. yeah. And don't just resist it because of the messenger. <laughs> you know, That's this good. is what... <laughs> I, I, I traveled those four little guys home and they said, we can't, we can't keep this to ourselves. The change in the culture didn't happen when they changed the change in the culture changed when they took it back to the city. Oh, that's good. Wow. Yeah. They had good all point. the food they could eat. They had all the gold they could hide. They had all the horses they could ride. And they said, we do not well. Mm-hmm. Mischief will befall us if we don't get it back to the city. Don't be, I guess, don't be satisfied when God helps you get more than enough. And I think that's what has changed the culture so strong in our local assembly is that men have gone from the premise of, what do I need? 
And how can I take care of my basic needs too? Where can I make a difference? What does the kingdom need? What does the kingdom need? To the point that our young guys, I'm saying, don't bid that job based on your bills. Build that job based on how much you want to bless the kingdom. To, to one of the young guys, he had an amount he set and suddenly he comes in and I said, double that, man. And uh, he said, I just reached this goal. I said, double that. He doubled it. And he was paying, uh, just he's paying double tithes. And he sent it back to his, sent out the quote, and the guy sent, caught him back in. He said, listen, if you're not, if you're not doing well, it doesn't do me well. He said, sit down, double that, double that bid. <laughs> now that went, that took him from 1,000 a week to 5,000 a week. And he came back and he made another bid and the guy came back to him and said, no, double that. That 5,000 job became a $10,000 job. And and, and the, 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 the mindset suddenly is not, can we keep our lights on, but how many churches can we keep the lights on in? How many mm. churches can we build? Well, how can we impact the kingdom? As a matter of fact, I've got, uh, I've got some extra time, Pastor, and, and I've, I, my bills are paid, and I'm paying double time. I've got more than enough. Uh, you need me? And, and those men were up in West Enfield working at another daughter work last night uh, because— the mindset is not just, can I make enough to have a nice home? Uh, that, and that is a major cultural shift. That, that's beyond Pastor Talon. That's what's so impactful about what you're saying. Is that is beyond just, I maybe shouldn't say just, but the foundational level of repentance, baptism in Jesus' name that defining attribute of being apostolic. This launches it into another kingdom sphere that that really does propel that other the spreading of that other culture, which is that base being born again. Mm -hmm. It fuels that. It, well, it, that is the, the, the kingdom back that, that we're going to preserve babies that are being born We've got to make sure that they're, that mothers are not killing them to the, their personal family. Well said. Wow. And so Very we've got good. to be sure that the church is on fire. Very we've got to be good. sure that the church is sustained because they're going to throw us some scraps over the... Okay, let's come back to that. The, you, you want to talk about consuming your own children. That's cross-cultural. That's idolatrous. That's throwing them to the fires of Molech. So there's another spirit behind that. It, it, it's, it's terrible... When, oh man, when you go to, you go to churches and I guess we're getting into it, but, but I've seen it and I've been a part of, I've seen it where you couldn't bring a new convert to church because they hadn't had a deep move of God in so long. Because of the culture. Wow. The culture would kill them because. Wow. They would rather eat their babies than they were, it was just a thing of the past. Prayer rooms was a leftover dung of the spiritual move in past. Wow. You couldn't bring babies to church. I didn't, I invited them, but I was afraid if they did come, what would I happen? was afraid of what they'd hear. Yeah. I've seen the time, yeah. the first time we brought, uh, you know, I'm all about seeing people change, but man, there was a guy, he had a, it was a, between here and someplace, but he had this massive. Beard. Oh no, you oh, have to I've tell been us there where. Too. You have to tell had us this, where. Had this long hair ponytail down the middle of his back, and uh, me and brother. Uh, Ooh, to, so uh, so. Uh, <laughs> me and no, me and brother Rick Strain were together, and uh, he had invited a man to to the assembly, and I'm telling you, this is like his first time to come. His baby's been abused. I mean. Uh, he's got this big tattoo on the side of his skull. It's, it's, it's a pretty wild deal. And he's trying to save his babies because they'd been abused. And he came to church, he was broken. And the man got up and, and said, we're not going to have no bearded, long haired spirit come up in this church. Oh. Now sufficient to say that that man left that 
and was committing adultery with one of the ladies in the church. And he was, and he was caught. And here's the scenario. Men that are abusive. Hold it now. The, 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 the pastor. The pastor was. was that, in that said, kind of, yeah. That said that, that destroyed yeah. this new baby. Mm. That's dang, now that's a culture that you can't bring new babies into. Right. And, and I know we're kind of go diving deep there. Forgive me. And if you need to cut no, this part out, no, cut service. it out. But at the end of the day, those are cultures that cannot sustain life. And so here they come. They bring it back. Oh, God, help me. You know, I pray that there would be a culture inside of our local assemblies that there's more than enough. And mm. we don't. The, there's mm. a move of the Holy Ghost that can sustain us. The, we can pray until when the songs of Zion are sung that there's an anointing. You don't have to kill each other. You don't have to be at odds with each other. One of the scriptures says, better is a morsel of bread in a peaceful setting than to feast in the house where there's sacrifices and strife. I'd rather eat a piece of bread happy than I had eat a steak where we're fighting and we're fussing and the culture is deadly. I don't want to be a part of it. And, and I've, I've seen it. So I know what I'm, I'm that's not going to be a part of something of that nature. So right. those four boys get back to the city. And this is what got me is that not a one of those four lepers was ever healed. They changed mm. the culture and went home with struggling with the same thing they were struggling with. Wow. The Everybody Bible else's says, future was impacted by that, but theirs wasn't. So we got individuals, and I'm not talking about uh, living in sin. I'm sure. not talking about, sure. I'm just saying that a person, you don't have to be perfect to change your culture. You don't have to be perfect and have it all together to impact your world. Here's these four. And the Bible mm -hmm. says that not one leper was healed, save for name and the leper. That means those four boys never knew what it was like to get healed. Wow. And I thought, wow. God... Am I willing to get up and go places that's uncomfortable? Mm. But if I sit here, I'm going to die. If I don't get to evangelizing and I and, and, and we're sitting in a dead church and there's no evangelism, brother, pastor, I'm just telling you, we got to get up. Yeah. If we're going to save this, the only way to save, again, in reference to another dear friend of mine's message, but if we're going to save our seed, we got to have a first generation experience with God. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it, we've got to have that influx, that harvest, that soul. And so you think about the, the third place where the windows of heaven is mentioned is in Malachi chapter number three. And in that setting, you're going to go says, there. <laughs> he says, where have you robbed me and tithe an offering? He said, wait a minute, where have we robbed you? He said, listen to me. He said, you said, Who? well, when God starts saying what you said, when God quotes you, <laughs> God said, God said, I'll tell you where you robbed me. I'll tell you what you robbed me. He said, you said that it was of no value for us to keep the ordinances of the Lord. He said, and I was listening. Oof. You kept paying your tithes and you kept giving in the offering. But what you said, you robbed me of any opportunity. You said, you know what? It's like I pay my tithes and nothing changes anyway. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> ooh, I give my offering. And, you know, it ain't no different. Why well, give offering? It don't happen anyway. And that's a culture. That's a culture. That's a, that's culture. a mindset. That's and that's culture. got to change if we're going to have the windows of oh, heaven open. He said, I'm telling you, prove me now and see if I won't pour blessings on you like I poured delusion right. upon the previous world and destroyed it. I'll right. open the windows of heaven on you. But here's the key. Here's the key that changes it. He said, you said it didn't help you. He said, but I'm telling you. He said, but they that feared the Lord <laughs> spake often of him. 
And he said, a book of remembrance was brought before the Lord. Now, this is the same setting. And he said, I read where they that feared me said, you know what? I don't understand it. But every time I pay my tithes and I get my offerings, it just always works out. Man, I, I can't, I haven't figured this out. And he said, and in that day, a book of remembrance will be brought to me. He said, now I'll read what you said about what you did, because what you said about what you did is more important than what you did. Well, Woo! well, that's how you cap a podcast right there. <laughs> wow. Wow. And he's, he, can't let me, he said, and in that day, I'll read, I'll read what you said. And then he said, and, and in that day, I'll know who's mine and who's not mine. And I'll know if you're righteous or if you're not righteous between the saved and the lost. And it's all predicated not on what you did. It's what you said about what you did. Yeah. Chosen to change your culture. Come on, brother. Make the difference. Start talking it. Start living it. Start mm. walking it. Start wearing mm. it. Start saying, hey, God's called me for such a time as this. Mm. I, mm. This, I can change it. And I'm telling you, God can change you as a young man. God can change you as a pastor. God can change you to make the absolute difference in your culture. Maine doesn't have, Maine isn't a spiritual place. Maine is spiritual. Maine doesn't have revival. Maine has revival. People don't, people are stoic and they're not expressive. Oh yeah, come visit our church. I promise you why. Because there's some new converts that has been changed to the core. Right. Anyway. Right. And then by extension, they're changing everybody around them. It's like the, or for uh, sure, impacting. Mm-hmm. Everybody a lot around. of them have not been able to have the privilege of visiting other churches. The only church has been Plaster Rock. Some of them, God bless one of my dear <laughs> men, he, he can't cross the border. Uh, uh. But he's a good man anyway. Uh, but he, do, he hasn't been to other churches, but I want to tell you what, he, he can out, he can out worship. He can out pray. He can out cry. He, it, you know why? Because he's been changed internally. It. Maybe it's good to kind of be stuck off out two or three miles, 3,000 miles away from everybody. Right. You don't have to battle the influence of the culture so much, but there's no, you know, com- there's, there's less competition with that true apostolic <laughs> culture. <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't want to change it, rearrange it. I, I love like it. it. Just check like it in. Like it. Oh, oh, man. Wow. So good. Wow. Hmm. That should put some shout in your Friday. Thank you, Pastor Townley. See, we yeah. knew who to bring in, didn't we? Bail us out I, again. I can already feel the traction. Bail us out again. I can feel the traction. We're going to the moon, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>